Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. This is MVJ's presentation of sports reporting uh, with special, uh, special guest Scooby Axon, who's an enterprise reporter for USA Today. Uh, he's going to talk to us about sports reporting, about the industry, about the work itself. And uh, we're going to talk about that for a little while, and then we're going to open up the floor to questions for you. So without further ado, uh, go ahead, Scooby, take it away. Uh, thank you guys for uh, allowing me to uh, speak with you a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of the one that I don't like to do much yapping. I just like to <laughs> tell it like it is and then, you know, really get it going by you guys asking questions. So th the first thing that I say to anybody um, wanting to get into this industry and you said everybody here has been in the military, I presume that if you get in this industry, um, you 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 have to have a work ethic um and if you are a procrastinator uh try something else because it's not gonna fly here <laughs> because um deadlines if you're on deadline your editor expects that copy to be in and they're not gonna uh have time for your excuses so if you're a procrastinator like to do things late then go, go to like public relations or something because <laughs> sports reporting probably is not for you so um, the way I look at getting in this industry, because it's so difficult, if you are in school, if, if your school has a student media department, I would walk through that door tomorrow. Like if your school has a website, like I went to the University of Oklahoma, we had a school paper that ran five days a week. So I walked through that door. And that's how I learned to become a journalist. So if you are a student and your school has a student media department, walk on through today, tomorrow, <laughs> as soon as you can and, and get involved in student media because that way um, they have the inside track of internships, another foot in the door. And once you get your foot in the door, it's your job to stay in that door. I always tell people my job every day is not sports reporting, it's to keep my job because I know 100 people want my job. So my job is to keep my job. So for those who are not in school, and like I said, in having a school with a student media department is the easiest way in. For those who are not in school, I suggest in every, depending on where you live, every, every city has a newspaper, or you read a newspaper that you admire you reach out to a journalist, a sports journalist and say, can I Zoom with you? Or if they're in that town, can I go get coffee? If somebody lives in New York City and reaches out to me and say, let me pick your brain. We're not going for coffee. We're going for pizza and burgers. Screw coffee, I don't play that coffee mess. We're going out for pizza and burgers and let's chat. Okay, that's how I do it. If somebody reaches out to me and I'm gonna put my personal information in the chat at the end of this, so you guys can reach out to me anytime you want to, okay? Um, that's how I do it. So if you're not in student media, reach out to a journalist, let's just say the New York Times. I live in New York City. You know, there's dozens of sports journalists here. To get inside and to know people, you have to know people, you have to know editors, you have to know the people that are get, gonna get your story published, okay? So reach out to those folks. That is the slickest way in. I always say it's it's 10% talent and 90% of who you know. And in, in, in sports journalism, it, that's the realest thing because people go from job to job. And some of these people you see going from job to job don't even have to apply for that job because those companies reach out and say, I want you, come on down. So it's who you know, and you have to have some kind of talent. <laughs> Let, let's be like, but. 10% talent, 90%, you know, who you know. So that that is, you know, kind of the, the way in. For me, um, I graduated from the University of Oklahoma. And as soon as I knew I was graduating, I, I knew I was going to Iraq. So I did not have a chance to apply for jobs. I knew I was going overseas. I got back overseas and did absolutely nothing for nine months. Did nothing. And I woke up one day, it's like, man, I, I want to help soldiers. That's what I want to do. I want to help soldiers. So I packed up and moved to Phoenix, Arizona. 
did not know a soul there and got a master's degree in psychology. And I was going to be a psychologist. I was going to be Dr. Scooby, okay? I was like, listen to me. When I was done with my master's degree program, if, if they would have gave me my own show, like Dr. Phil, like Dr. Scooby, they would have had to put my show on HBO because I would be cussing people out and telling them, you know, about their lives. So while I was applying to PhD programs to Arizona State and Pepperdine, I had to itch to write again, but I didn't know how to get back in the game. So this is what I did. I literally Googled graduate journalism schools. Columbia popped up at the top. Columbia, Ivy League, give out the Pulitzer Prize, the whole nine. So I was like, well, I'll go ahead and apply, get rejected, and then I can go be Dr. Scooby. Well, I got into Columbia. And I'm like, oh, damn, it's time to move to New York City. And so the Columbia Journalism Program, the master's degree program is 10 months. So you start in August, you show up before everybody else on campus, and you graduate in May. Two weeks before graduation, I got hired at Sports Illustrated. And I was there for seven years until they got bought out and two thirds of us got laid off. <laughs> and so I freelanced for 18 months and then I got hired on at USA Today. And that's where I've been since last May. So that, that is my journey. I don't recommend that. You know, you don't need to go to graduate journalism school and, and pay outrageous amounts of tuition to get where I am. Okay, because it's who you know. And the next point I'm going to get is the story. Let's just say, all right, and, I, and I implore you guys to read everything you can every day. Have a mix of knowledge, not just sports. Know what's going on in the world because when somebody interviews you, they're going to ask you what's going on in the world. And if you sit there and don't know anything about Ukraine, you're screwed. <laughs> you know, even though it has nothing to do with sports, you know, so have a mix. I, I tell people budget $30 a month. Okay. And subscribe to newspapers, 30 bucks a month and su subscribe to the New York times, Washington post, LA times, and get that knowledge of world events and sports and in everything else that's going on in the world. Um, because like this past week, I, it was so busy with um, the Super Bowl in the Olympics. Like we were spread so thin. We had half our guys in the Olympics and half our guys in Los Angeles. And then the few of us that didn't go, we we're just left on our own. <laughs> you know, go do what you do, you know. So I, I implore you guys to budget $30 and, and go. But if you're in school, um, some schools have programs with like the New York Times, Washington Post, where subscriptions are free. So look into that as well. Okay, so read, write. Okay, sports reporting. Okay, I'm usually a features writer. That means I profile people, whatever. And also go to games. But I do a game story differently. Okay, I just don't tell you what the score was, this, 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 and this. Okay, because we all saw the game. We, we know what happened. So if you have time, I implore you to sit down, watch a game and pretend you're a journalist and write a game story on that, on that game you're watching, basketball, football, whatever. And then have somebody critique that. I will critique it, send it to me, okay? Send it to me, I will critique it. And that's how you become, because when, once you're in that press box, it's just you, <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't no editor helping you, it's, it's you, like if you go to a football game, you're there with your laptop and you cannot say a word, no matter what's going on in, on the field, you have to shut up. You just have to type on your computer. That's the rules of the press box, okay? Basketball games is different. Everybody's loud, everybody's cheering, but for football games, you just have to sit there like, okay, oh, great, great catch. And you nod to your colleague like, mm -hmm, great catch. You can't like scream and yell like, uh, no, uh-uh. <laughs> you'll be the first one kicked out, okay? So I implore you to watch a game and write a game story on that game, okay? Uh, also, if you need help with that, I will send you a couple links. I will send you a game story from 2016 
the Cotton Bowl. It was uh, Ohio State and USC. I will send you that. And then I will send you a, a game that just happened a couple weeks ago when Steph Curry broke the three-point record at Madison Square Garden. I will send you that game story. And you'll be surprised. I don't even get to the score of the game until like the seventh paragraph. And you will see how to formulate a game story. You just don't say, all right, he went for 30 points. He went for this. He went for that. Yep, we saw it. We know. <laughs> That's in the story too. But you have to build that story to get to where you're trying to go in the story. Okay. So um, that I implore y'all to do that. Like I said, I will send you my, my uh, work email, my personal email, um, if you need help with that. Okay. Um, because that, and just write something every day. That's how you get your skills up. Write something every day. No matter, even if it's just for yourself, just write every day, get those skills sharp. Also, I want you to go look up the Associated Press um, style book because most newsrooms use AP style. You, you have a few like the New York Times that you, they have their own style book, but most of the time, um, you know, everybody uses Associated Press style, okay? So go online if you need to order a book at a bookstore or just study it because you're going to have to, once you turn in your copy, you're going to have to know abbreviations of states, you know, <laughs> it, it, you know, simple stuff. You know, you're going to have to know that stuff. Um, the art of the interview. Um, this is important because every interview that I do, it's a conversation unless I'm grilling somebody on an investigation. It's always a conversation. Um, I remember um, I, I was sent to Dallas to do a story on Larry Brown. He was the uh, Hall of Fame coach. He was at SMU. Now, Larry Brown had won a, a title with the Detroit Pistons in 04, okay? So I'm thinking to myself, SMU, uh, man, there's not much history here at all in basketball. And I'm like, and, and Larry Brown at that time was like 73 years old. So can you imagine a 73 year old coaching 18, 19, 20 year olds, you know, that generation gap. So I go to his office and I look around, he has all these trophies, hall of fame. He has a, a bottle of wine sitting on his desk. And as I'm observing, I can put this in the story. You know, I see all this stuff. And the first question I ask him is what the hell are you doing here? And then he just opened up. My wife want me out of the house. I'm bored. I'm 70 years old. And he just opened up the floodgates because I asked him, what the hell is he doing here? Because SMU has no basketball tradition. You're a Hall of Famer. What the hell are you doing in Dallas, Texas? You know, you coach the Knicks, you coach the Pistons, you coach UCLA, you coach Kansas. You know, you won national titles. You, what, the, what the hell are you doing here? And he just opened up the floodgates, man. So it's a conversation, you know? You can't be afraid to talk to people, you know? You can't be afraid to talk to LeBron James. Yeah, he's six foot eight, but he's a human too. You know, <laughs> ask him a question if you want to. I'm, I'm never scared to talk to a coach. Bill Belichick, I ask you what I want to. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> you know, you're, you know, some 70 year old man, like what's he gonna do? Like the only thing he can do is not answer my question, you know? So. You have to be approachable to people. You have to um, be a go-getter in this kind of kind of thing. Um, like I said, the the art of the interview is like I said, I'm very conversational. It's it's always a conversation. Um, and the more comfortable you get with asking people questions, the more they open up. Like Larry Brown didn't know me from Adam. He didn't know me at all. <laughs> but as the conversation goes, you know, and then when I reach out to people to ask people, can I interview you? I always put in the email, I only need five, I only need 10, 15 minutes of your time. I know you're a busy man. And I'm thinking in my mind, we're going to talk for 30 minutes, but you put in the email <laughs> 15 to 20 to secure the interview. And then you can talk to them longer. You know, I always do that. It always works out that way. So, like I said, once you, once you get the interview 
and I'm, I'm assuming you guys have some more pointed questions as far as what I do in my job. Um, you're going to you're going to learn quick, you know, but it starts with the story. You have to have great story ideas. You know, you guys have have to have a critical brain when you think of story ideas. You know, I, I can't just come to my editor and be like, yeah, I want to I want to do something on, you know, donkey racing. I'm like, get the hell out of here with that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there, you, you have to have a critical mind and know what's going on around the world. You know, because in sports, it never stops. It never stops. Another thing, if you are not on social media, wrong answer. If you're not on Twitter, I don't care if you have two followers, get on Twitter. <laughs> get on LinkedIn, get on Facebook. Twitter is the journalist's best friend because that's how most news breaks. When you're, when you're watching NBA free agency, where do you get your news? Woj from ESPN on Twitter every two minutes. Adam Schefter every two minutes. That's where most people get their news. And that's where most people share the things that they have done. You have to think of yourself as a brand. You know, I'm my own brand. I'm, I'm going to be the one to promote my stuff. So it's on you and it's on the people that you can know. Use me as a resource. Okay, if you need something looked at, use me as a resource. I didn't, I didn't have that chance. No one taught me anything except what I learned in the classroom and what, what I did on my own. But you guys have a great opportunity to use us to get where you want to go, okay? Because when they ask for references, if they see Scooby Axon down here, USA Today, they know that you know me. And even if I don't know you, Hell, I can BS my way to, <laughs> to, you know, if somebody calls, an employer calls me, oh, yeah, oh, man, yeah, the greatest person in the world, man. He'll be a great asset to your newsroom. Use me and use others, you know. Of course, first ask them. <laughs> first, can, can I use you as a reference? And then, you know, so from this point on, you guys know me, okay? Use me ask questions. Like I said, if you need me to look at a resume, my wife's a journalist as well, you know, so we're here to help, you know. Um, as veterans, you know, some people look at it sideways, <laughs> you know, and just like, okay, yeah, they want to give us the praise, but are they actually out here trying to help us? We have to do this ourselves, you know. And that's why I thank Russ, man. Like, we have to do this ourselves because, you know, it, it's, a, it's a rough world out there, especially here in New York City. And I was hoping that you wouldn't hear ambulances all in the background um, that's been going off all damn night. But use us as a resource. Um, but now, 20 minutes in, I'm going to give it to y'all. And y'all come with, come, with, come with the fire. Ask me anything about journalism. Ask me anything about my job. Ask me anything, anything, anything. So come with it. How, um, how versed do you have to be? Like, is there a certain beat that you stick to, like football, basketball, baseball, or can you do, like, I love boxing, MMA, but I like football and golf yeah. and all the other stuff too. But, like, I just, I, I boxed in the Army. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I boxed in high school and I just, I don't know if, if there's even a, a market for, for boxing anymore in sports, um, but what, what do you think? Yeah, so, and that, that's a great question. So it's great to have a knowledge in one sport because that, because once you get onto a job, they're going to say, all right, this is the, this is the um, mixed martial arts beat writer. And then they're going to send you everywhere, <laughs> you know, big fights. UFC, the whole nine. But then it's important to get to know the other sports. Because if we're short staff and I ask you to go down to Madison Square Garden and go cover the New York Rangers and you don't know a thing about hockey, you don't know what a blue line is, you don't know what a PowerPoint is, <laughs> a power play, you don't know what icing is, you're screwed. <laughs> you know, so have a general knowledge of the other sports. You can have that knowledge, you can have that, 
great knowledge in that one area, but in the back of your mind, you know, they may send you out somewhere where you're just like, I've done, I've done it all. I write football, I write baseball, basketball, horse racing, horse race. I wrote on horse racing at Sports Illustrated. So you have to know what a furlong is because the reader will know that you're BSing them <laughs> as soon as you write that stuff down. They're going to know. So it's great to have that knowledge and stick with that knowledge because you're an asset. But in the back of your mind, no, you have to know those other sports because your editor um, may ask you to go cover something else that's out of your beat. Also, because sports is... Um, so prevalent with athletes getting arrested. Um, you better know how to talk to the police. Every time an athlete gets arrested, guess who I'm calling? That police department. Do you have those, those that arrest record? Do you have the 911 tapes? You know, you better know how to file a, a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act request. This is all part of journalism learning. Because once you step foot in that newsroom, the editor don't have time to teach you. They don't. <laughs> There's so much so other things going on that you have to have that basic knowledge um, to get the job done. And the more you know, the more you're going to stand out. You know, like I said, my job every day is to keep my job because you, you guys are the next wave, not me. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm waiting for one of you guys to come take my job. So that's how, how I have to approach it because sport, every, you know, if, if you grew up watching sports, everybody wants to be at that game. Everybody wants to watch that game, you know, and as the media, I, I can't look at games anymore as a fan. I can't look like, like I went to university of Oklahoma. They've been football powerhouses. So if they lose, I don't cry. I'm like, hell, I wasn't out there. <laughs> you know, it wasn't me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's let let the other fans cry about it. But that's the way I have to look at it. So, so James, stick with your with your passion, but also know you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to be versatile. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. You, you got to be versatile and, and know those things. Like I said, soccer. I didn't know a thing about soccer before I went to Sports Illustrated. But now I know what the Champions League is. <laughs> I know what MLS is. So you, you have to kind of learn on the fly. Like I said, you know, I, I try to, you know, watch as much as I can, read as much as I can. There's only 24 hours in, in a day. I can't get to it all. But know that that versatility is going to make you stand out. The more things on your resume that you can show that you can do, the better. You got uh, Justin Meacock, got your hand raised. Go ahead, Justin. I uh, just had a question. Uh, what's an average day for you like? How many events uh, do you usually cover and how many features or articles do you produce a day? That's a good question. So usually I'm around all day. And if there's breaking news, you know, I usually handle breaking news. Um, Let's, there's not a set amount, um, like, um, okay, yep. so, I so you filed two today, right, Scooby? Yeah, I filed like two breaking news stories today, but usually, um, my features are so, you know, heavy and long that they, you know, they take time to edit. So this, the past couple weeks, um, this weekend, I will have a, a feature on Myron Roll. I don't know if you know who he is, but he used to play at Florida State. And he was a Rhodes Scholar um, and went um, and left Florida State early um, to go over to Oxford uh, and really hurt his draft status. So he comes back, gets drafted by the Titans, doesn't appear in any games in two years, goes back to Florida State. And now he's a neurosurgeon in Boston. And so I profiled him um, and that's coming out. Um, and then uh, this weekend, I have a story about black sportscasters, how you, you're starting to see former athletes turn into sportscasters and then 
parlay that into other things like Michael Strahan or Nate Burleson on CBS. Um, I interviewed um, Jay Williams of ESPN. I interviewed um, Emmanuel Acho of Fox Sports. So that's typical of my day. Um, um, and like I said, the, it, it, it's different every day. There, there could be one story that dominates the entire day. And you're just, you're sitting there like, well, this is it. Like, I remember a couple of weeks ago when uh, Aaron Rodgers um, said he wasn't vaccinated and went on this tirade. That took up the entire day. That was the whole day. It, it just blew everything out of the water, you know? Um, so it's, it's really different, you know? Um, like I said, I had to write a soccer story today about a German team in Ukraine you know um so you know it, it's that's the beauty of it you, you I have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow no idea um uh, but th that's you know um for some reason people just read bad stuff like most of our traffic comes from bad stuff like somebody getting arrested or somebody saying something racist or something like 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 you people will click on anything <laughs> like which is fine, you know, I don't, I don't care. Um, like we got like 2 million clicks on some figure skating duo suing NBC for using um, their music. I'm like, yeah, okay. If that's what you wanna read, that's what you wanna read. So long story short, my days are, are different every day. Go ahead, Thank Max. You. All right, sorry, I didn't know how to uh, use the the thing to actually make, click on emoji, but Scooby, what I wanted to ask you is, and I'm actually here to profile it and write a blog up, but what I wanted to ask you is, I noticed you, when you talk about stories, you talk more about other things than the actual game, like the arrest and what they're doing outside of the game. I mm -hmm. almost feel like the game is secondary to all these other things. Yeah. So how often is like, like you said, like the arrest and all this drama, that's actually more important in the game. Does, does that kind of frustrate you sometimes as a sport journalist? Because you want to just focus on the game and what they're doing, right? Yeah, but like a game story, um, again, there, there's a time and a place for that. Um, of course, if I go to an event, I'm going to have the details of the game in there. But take, for instance, I think um, a best example is my Steph Curry story that wrote on him um, breaking the three point record. And, and so I went back and it started with, you know, Steph Curry, you know, 12 years ago, showed up to Madison Square Garden and dropped 54 on the Knicks. And that's where it started. That's where, where the aura of Steph Curry started. And to come full circle and, and then there's so much that happened at the game. You know, he's hugging Ray Allen, Reggie Miller. You know, his dad is there. His coach from college is there. You see all these things. The Knicks fans were going crazy. It felt like a Golden State game, but we we're at Madison Square Garden. Every, every three-pointer that went up, the crowd went crazy. Spike Lee is over there acting a fool. You know, so, so if you see all these things, you can incorporate in this story. And then after the game, when you actually get to talk to Steph Curry, you know, then you can include those quotes in what he said. You know, one of the questions was, do you do you consider yourself the greatest shooter now? And he's like, yes, I do. And he had a hat on that had the number of three pointers, uh, the record breaking three pointer. So you just notice things that you can put in the in the in the game story. Um, it's not frustrating at all. You're there to there to watch the game. You're there to get the sights and sounds of the game. Because if you just write a straight game story, he scored this, he scored that, he, he did this. You know, we, we all have eyes, we saw that, <laughs> but there has to be more into it to incorporate that in there. Um, and that's what makes a great game story. Like I said, the Steph Curry um, story, the, the final score, I don't think I wrote that until like the sixth or seventh paragraph. Okay, so you build up, you know, everything and then bam you give it to me so that's how i write a game story I, I can't speak for anybody else um and it's not frustrating at all 
trust me, you know, you're there at the game, you're immersed in what's going on. I'm there to work. And like I said, um, deadline. Like those editors want that copy like 15 minutes after the game. They're not playing around, <laughs> you know, they want that copy in that inbox. So like, I remember I, I had written like 500 words before the game, before the game even started. And that, that's how you prepare, you know, because anything could happen in the game. You know, you, you think the game is going one way and next thing you know, the game is in triple overtime and everything you wrote is for not. <laughs> you know, it happens. And then you're scrambling, trying to write something. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, so, um, and then there's things that, you know, you can watch and you just can't believe your eyes that you saw that and you have to describe that in a certain way of what you just saw. Like if you saw a spectacular play or a record being broken or whatever, you know, you just have to describe that in your own certain way. But no, I, I've never felt like that. Like um, I'm, I'm going to a game and I can't get the actual, what actually happened in the game. Cause that's what actually happened in the game is going to be there. I got one more thing to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, First of all, have you in the interview with the late Kobe Bryant and um and besides him, who is probably like the best sports athlete or you have ever interviewed? Like I said, talk to LeBron James or talk to um Gabby Douglas, you know, from the Olympics. I, I talked to, I mean, just those are the people that I'm in I'm impressed with, you know. Um, especially Gabby Douglas, because this was a um, couple of years ago when she came back from Rio and people were just getting on her case about she didn't hold her hand over her heart and social media was just killing her about the way she looked, her hair. So I interviewed her and she just poured out her guts, man. I was just, I, and I, I, the one thing I, I really don't, you know, I, I enjoy women's sports, but if you have to interview them after they lose, I mean, oh, it's it's a lost call. You're trying to talk to girls while they're crying and you can't get any, it's no, no. <laughs> it's just, it's like, I'd rather like, no, I'll, I'll get you in an hour, <laughs> you know? And you just, you just try to, every situation is different. Um, but yeah, it, that's a difficult question to, to answer because like I said, you have to look at them as, even though they had the super human skill, they're, they're humans, you know, they have feelings, they have emotions. And the more you, you, you can't, you can't be a fanboy. You can't do it. You know, you may have your favorite athletes and that you look up to. I mean, if I had a chance to interview Hank Aaron or Muhammad Ali, I probably would have lost it. <laughs> I probably would have had to like, no, I can't do that. But but most of the time you just have to get out your mind that, hey, they're just like us, you know, um, and they have a story to tell. They don't want to tell it, so it's your job to tell that story. Um, that's what journalism is. That's straight up what journalism is. It's all about telling stories that can be told or that people don't want told. And once <laughs> people don't want their story told, that's probably when they probably did something they don't want you to know. <laughs> so I, know, I just want to say that I love I love old outdated wrestlers like Hulk Hogan and oh yeah yeah Randy, Randy Macho Man Savage I love yeah. oh yeah oh um, listen man I grew up on that that NWA that TBS wrestling dude I'm telling you, man Dusty Rhodes you can't tell me nothing man Sting the Road Warriors please hey that's that's why my favorite team is the Atlanta Braves because when um, cause my mother was in the military too. So stationed at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And, you know, back in the day, we didn't have all these stations, you know, we didn't have 700 cable stations. We had NBC, CBS, you know, ABC and TBS and the Braves were on TBS and they were horrible. <laughs> and then they start getting good. So I've been a Atlanta Braves. I, I know where you at, man. I, I know where you at with the wrestling. Trust me. Coming off the top rope, brother. Yes, sir.
I got questions, but I don't want to interrupt Tom. You got it. You got any questions? Yeah, I yeah I've got. Questions. Yeah, bring them. Uh, yeah, I've got one. Um, so you referenced the AP style guide earlier. Um, yeah. As as a sports reporter, how like how much leeway do you get in order to like kind of flex your own voice uh, as opposed to like you know other other uh, types of journalism? Now, now, the style book is the style book. You have to adhere to the style book. But when you're writing copy, you have to make it your own. You can't be like anybody else. You have to have your own voice. Like I said, the style book is a style book. It's just a guide to show you, all right, this is the abbreviation for this, or this is the, um, the first reference of this. That's just a style book to, to get you where you're going. But you have to have your own voice your own style your own way of thinking you know like i said the style book is the style book you know and just use that as a reference if you don't know um date lines or um uh, states abbreviations use that as a guide um, otherwise use your own voice because that's your name on that byline no one else's you may have an editor but the first thing people see when they click on the story is who wrote that story and that's why you never see, like on gossip blogs, you never see who wrote the story. Like TMZ, show me the last time you saw an author's name on a TMZ article. Never, <laughs> because they're, they're not journalists. <laughs> they're gossipers, they're bloggers. You know, they pay people to get stories. You know, there, there's a fine line between that kind of journalism and what we do. I'm just trying to tell a story, you know? So I'm writing college football and I get hate mail for three weeks because I said something bad about somebody's team. Well, it's not my fault your team sucks, you know? Blame your team, you know? So I get these emails all the time. It's hilarious people spend time to email me over something somebody else said. I didn't say it, I just wrote about it. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's, it's insane. So in that sense, have your own voice, but know if you write something critical, they're coming after you. There's, there's people in grandma's basement waiting <laughs> to, to, to bring you down, you know, just waiting on the internet. Trust me, trust me, man. It, that's, but just have your own voice, man. Like I said, um, at the end of this, like I said, if y'all, you guys need help, in any form or fashion, just just get at me, man. I'm I'm here to help. Uh, I'd like to ask a couple questions. Uh, uh, first of all, I wanna I wanna tell you that that first thing you said about don't procrastinate. You know, maybe think about uh, when uh, Hunter S. Thompson, Hunter S. Thompson, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gonzo journalist, great sports reporter, and he he uh, is a great fan of Ali. And he, you know, he stayed in a hotel and got drunk or got intoxicated on something yeah. and missed the whole rumble in the jungle. Probably the greatest, one of the greatest sports events in the history of the world, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate you talking about, like, this is a job. It's a hard job, yes. you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's fun. Trust me. I get paid to watch sports. That sounds <laughs> absurd on its own. I get paid to watch sports. No, <laughs> that that's the gist of the job. So I'm I'm not some surgeon, you know. I'm a journalist. I get paid to watch sports. Um, so yeah, I'm, So my question. So you know, we got. Well, first of all, we have uh, we have really good opportunities for our members to get into uh, uh, different um, schools where they can learn reporting and they yep. can they can gain experience. And, and we, we really encourage that uh, uh, as much as we can. Um, but for those journalists who, who might not have access to uh, to education or, or maybe who maybe they're working a full time job and they're, they're trying to you know figure out how they can squeeze in some reporting and all that stuff, I mean, what do you think about like, are there places of entry that are kind of a lower barrier? Like maybe, I don't know, maybe in your hometown, there's like some high school sports yep. going on and you can like, can you maybe just describe Absolutely. what you think, how you might break into it? That so, so if, if I was still in Lawton, Oklahoma, 
you know, they have the Lawton Constitution, circulation 50,000. I want to break into sports reporting. They have three high schools there in Oklahoma, play pretty um, high level football. I will, this is what I would do. I will email the football writer and say, I will um, ask him, can I do like what the cops call a, a ride alone? Can I, can I shadow you for a game? And just see what he does, see how he interviews, see how he goes about his business. Because the best way you can learn is by watching somebody else do their craft. You know, that's what I would do. I would get to know people. Because like I said, this business is about knowing people, but it's also about your talent. You have to be aggressive to get what you want these days. That's what I believe, you know. And there's nothing wrong with reaching out to somebody, asking for help. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and so that's what I would do if I wasn't in school and I didn't have access. You reach out to somebody, you write them a nice email, you know, say, I know you're busy, but I, I really want to do this thing. Um, I, I can use some guidance. I can use a mentor. That's what I would do personally. Thank you. And, and uh, you know, now, and now that you're now, with the work that you do and the, the press boxes you're in, you know, um, can you just tell us kind of, I mean, what's it like in those, in those press boxes, right? We see, we see the reporters in there, you know, you guys all know each other. Is there, you guys, uh, you see a new guy come in, you kind of give him shit or like, what's it like? No, no, it's, it's, it's nothing like a football locker room because everybody's there to do a job. I tell you what, um, depending on where you are, um, they, they feed you pretty good especially at the college level. They, they feed you pretty good. Like going to a bowl game, I, the, I referenced the Cotton Bowl um, in Arlington, Texas a couple of years ago. I mean, they kept on feeding us. Like, damn, man, <laughs> like, we're, we're, we're here to do a job. Just quit, quit feeding us. <laughs> like, like feed at, us at the hotel. Then we get to the game. They have a nice spread. And then at halftime, here comes the cookies and the, and the cakes. And I'm just like, come on, man, like, like, like you're there to do a job, but they take good care of you, you know, but we never give each other, you know, that kind of rubbing like we're in a locker room. Um, everybody's pretty much friendly um, unless you get the you get the occasional asshole sometimes. But hey, you know, that's that's the job. But yeah, it's just you know, it's fun. You're there to watch a game and to write about what you are witnessing. Um, and like I said, it's, it's exhilarating, to tell you the truth, you know? Um, because like I say, at football games, you, you have to generally be quiet. Um, but um, once halftime and everybody starts mingling and then after the game, when you go to meet the team, the coaches for interviews, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a healthy competition but everybody's just chill because they know what we do. We're sports reporters. What the hell do we have to complain about? <laughs> you know, we're, we're just, it, it's nothing like that. It's nothing like a locker room. Um, and over the past years, um, access to locker room have, has gotten um, dwindled down pretty significantly um, um, where it's almost damn near non-existent. Um, the last game I went to um, in Brooklyn, the Lakers were in town um, and we got to, you know, they, they didn't do it over Zoom. We actually got to <laughs> sit down and ask like Russell Westbrook and LeBron James questions and James Harden, he was pissed and like, yeah, it, it, was, just, it was a good time. Go ahead, Max. I got a question for you. So you said uh, sometimes when you get to a game, before the game even starts, before the players come out, you said you've already written 500 words. What are those 500 words you're writing before game starts? The, the pen, like every, every game I think has a storyline. Okay, whether it's um, a losing streak, this team has lost 17 straight to this team and then they finally beat them. You know, there, there's always a storyline to every game. So you pick the storyline that you want to use, and then you fill in the rest. That's, that's what I do. 
you know? Again, I think my greatest example is that Steph Curry story. It's on my LinkedIn. If you want to go to my LinkedIn, and I'll, I'll link it down here in the chat. Um, but yeah, you just, just have an idea of what you want to write about and then fill in the rest. And then after a game, you go interview people. <laughs> and trust me, those two hours, two and a half hours you had a basketball game goes by like that. Because next thing you know, you're uh, on the subway going home. I'm like, where the hell did time go, man? <laughs> you know, it, it's just that fast pace. It's just that fun. Um, but yeah, um, you better write before <laughs> you get to the game because you're not going to have time if you're on deadline. And, unless you're a thousand word a minute typer, you're, you're just not going to get it done. So you have to have some background on the story. Every journalist does it. Every single one of us, trust me. Every single one of us, we're at a game, they already have 500 words, you know, because it, it's just, it's, it's so 24 seven, people want that information right now, right after the game, they want it. So yeah, um, every journalist does it, trust me on that one. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how you got that job at Sports Illustrated while you're at Columbia? What, what what kind of job was that, and and how and did you did you network to get into it? Did you what, what was the deal? How'd you do that? Re remember when I said it's who you know. So during the ten month program, during the second semester, we got to basically choose what classes we wanted to go in. So I chose one called, you know, writing along the poverty line, and I chose one called Columbia News Service, and then I chose the sports class. The adjunct professor was Richard Deitch, the media writer at Sports Illustrated. And he destroyed us all semester. He made us feel like we wasn't nothing. You know, we would turn in our stories and all this red ink would be all over our stories. He's like, like, damn, we suck, man. And then like two weeks later, Sports Illustrated had this um, breaking news team that they were putting together and they, he, they basically hired six of us out of that class. And so that's how I got my foot in. It's who I knew at Columbia. He was my teacher. Um, the Columbia News Service class, my editor, his name is TJ Quinn, works for ESPN Investigations. If, if you've been around baseball this week, um, on the Tyler Skaggs Angel, um, overdose he was all over that on twitter so i was fortunate it's who you know that's how i got in at sports illustrated now once i got my foot in the door i busted my ass to stay there now stuff happens where corporations come in and they take over and fire everybody like they did at sports illustrated that that's just it wasn't nothing i did that's just how companies sometimes work so that's how I got in. Very fortunate, very fortunate. Uh, I wanna make sure you guys uh, see, see this chat. Um, so th that's my um, personal email. Um, I want to ask you something too. Yeah, go ahead. So I know you said like, how did you, did you say education? Like you, you said, I know everybody don't have time for a fancy education, but yeah. you got one. Yeah. Um, and you, and you all said that the Columbia led to your first job, which is, mm -hmm. a, which is a cool job. D do you do like in hindsight, do you think Columbia was worth it? Like, you know, absolutely. But again, I wouldn't recommend that for everyone. I needed to get my foot back in the door because I went to Iraq. I have been out of the game. That was my way in. That way don't work for everybody. Now, if you're fortunate enough to get into Columbia, 99% chance you're going to succeed because the training is that strong. The connections are that strong. Chances are you're going to make it. Okay. So also, um, and I, I think you guys have missed the internship round this year. Around September, October, November, you're starting to, you're, you'll start to see newspapers 
advertise about summer internships. I would apply to 50 of them. I don't care, you know, because internships, once you get your foot in that door, the whole world will open up for you. And it's your responsibility to stay in that door. So if you get an internship at the Los Angeles Times, you better make sure you bust your tail. So at the end of that internship, they say, all right, we're going to hire you on after the after this 12 week period. That's what you want. And you don't need an education to do that. You know, again, get with some of these guys, get with editors, get with decision makers, send them an email and say, I wanna learn. I'm, I'm green, I wanna learn. Cause if somebody came to me with that, let's go. Let's go out for some burgers, let's talk. Let's do this. Let's get, let's get to where you want to go. I wish I had somebody like that in my life. I had to do this all on my own. There wasn't no mentor for me. It's like I had to just do it on my own. So I'm, I'm letting you guys know there's a resource out here for you guys. Use it. Please use it. Okay. I want to um, piggyback on you a little bit there, there, Scooby. You know, first of all, let me say I I can't tell you how much I appreciate you talking to us and you, you being so generous with putting yep. your, your emails in this, in this chat. Um, you know, everybody who's in here, you know, definitely take advantage of that. The other thing I'll say is, yeah, it's true. It's, it's true. It's who, you know, you know, but it's also who, you know, that, that respects you writing enough to, to exactly. it, it's who, you know, that respects your work enough that they're willing to, because, you know, you, you give a recommendation to somebody, you're putting yourself out there, you put yeah, your own reputation absolutely. out there. Absolutely. So, so please, I want to ask you all, absolutely communicate with Scooby, but, but make sure that, make sure that you're putting in the work, make sure that you're, you know, I'd love to see, I'd love to see you guys follow that suggestion that he had about writing a game story or, or writing a story that you're into and, and send it over to him. And let them uh, let them give you a critique. Let them give you, you know, this is an unbelievable opportunity, guys. Have a professional, you know, really take a look at your stuff and give you a hard chop. It's it's one of the best experiences you can have. And, uh, and okay, yeah. so let let me uh, do something right quick. I'm a uh, I'm gonna send the link to the stories I was referring to, um, right quick. So give me a quick second. Um. Okay. No, oh, that was that long ago? My goodness. Okay, let me see. Um, all right, so this is the, the Steph Curry one. Um, and then, like I said, my LinkedIn. Um, let me see. Um, so that, like I said, that's the best example. Um, uh, let me see. This is um, we'll see Ohio State. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, so those are two of uh, two good examples of, of game stories. Um, where you know you kind of go in knowing certain things and you just write on what you see make um, sure you copy these guys the 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 chat disappears i think after the uh yeah and you can go on um linkedin on my linkedin and there's like 35 stories down in a feature um some of them are subscription meaning you have to have a subscription to read them but most of my sports illustrated stuff is free um some of my usa today stuff you have to have a subscription for, but um, these two stories are, are free. So you just click on and read them. Um, but like I said, the, the best way to learn is to do it. Start right every day. And it don't matter if you think your copy suck, who cares? You're getting better. No one, you're getting better. You have to perfect this craft. You have to learn, you have to know things. Um, because like I said, these editors are pretty stingy um, and they just won't let you go out there and do everything. Trust me, I tried, <laughs> you know, I, I've tried. 
Um, um, and then think outside the box. Here, here's another one for you. Um, um, I did while I was at Columbia that got published at the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Um, got some early work for us, eh? Yeah. Oh, this this one is. Um, I, I and I, I I want you guys to read the headline and say how the hell did this get published? I mean. So yeah, click on it and it's like, how the hell did this, you know, um, there's some weird people out there, let me tell you, once you click that story. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, I did that story while I was at Columbia um, and I was shocked. I, I, did some, I did some weird stuff, man. I did a story on uh, chess boxing. Uh, it's exactly how it sounds. You play chess, and then you gear up, go in the boxing ring, get beat up for three minutes, then uh, take off your gloves, come back down, try to play chess, and try to win while your head is off. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm dead serious. <laughs> like, like, um, and so let me say that I just have you just have to have outside the box. I hate being like everybody else, man. I I, I can't stand it. So I, I have to think differently than than most people. Um, also did a story about funeral cost. But in this sense, I thought like uh, funerals are so expensive. Are there other alternatives? And so I found this company that will take, you know, grandpa, grandma's ashes, Fido's ashes and put them in a balloon and send them up. And there you go. And just like, bye, <laughs> you know, instead of having the $8,000 funeral, put grandma in a balloon for $9.95 and, and have at it, you know? So like, like, so you have to have, like, they're, like I can walk down the street tonight and just observe New York City and find 10 stories, you know? Because people are always doing something. People are always talking. So um, observation is, is another one. Have a critical mind and observe. That, those, those bring about the best stories, so. Scooby, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Thank you for giving us this great information. Um, MVJ members, thanks for showing up. I really hope you got a lot out of this. And uh, and uh, make sure, listen, when this Zoom goes away, it's gone. So make sure you got you get those links copied. Make sure that uh, if you if you want to reach out to Scooby, you get his information. And uh, and uh, this has been a great great time. Thank you all. See y'all. Thanks, Scooby.